Hi, in this video I'm going to show you how to modify the trolling motor on your kayak to keep it from getting damage from an impact while you're out on the water. I'm also going to show you how I made an easy cable lift system so you can trim the depth of your trolling motor while you're out on the water. That being said, let's go ahead and get started. This is my high-tech hydro tank testing unit and a quick overview shows I have my 12 volt battery source along with my PWM which will gauge how much power is being put out and you'll be able to read it on the meter there and then here's the setup for the trolling motor in the tank and what I'm going to be looking for is any deflection in the shaft of the tank. To start the test I'm going to ramp up the speed very slowly to 50% and there's no deflection of the trolling motor shaft. Now I'm going to ramp it up to 100%. It's still no deflection in the shaft. Now of course ramping it up very slowly makes it easier so the next test will be ramping it up in bigger increments. Now that you've seen how the initial test works, I'm just going to do a close-up on the shaft and I'm going to ramp it up quickly to 50% power. And there was no deflection. Now I'm going to go from 50 to 100. Still no deflection. But now I'm going to go from 0 to 100 and see how that goes. No noticeable deflection, so it looks like this part's going to work out very well. These are the parts I'm going to be using in the impact resistance setup along with the cable lift system and as you can see right here I have a stainless steel pulley I have a quick link two one quarter inch diameter fender washers one quarter inch diameter shock cord a small zip tie a 29 millimeter Harkin pulley and a little spacer I made out of some poly cutting board a couple of mounting bolts and the paracord that I'm going to use to lift the motor up with. So for the lift system, I had to make a template for the Harkin pulley. As you can see, I have two holes drilled here. And because of where I chose it, there's plenty of space to put the bolt head back there. And the spacer is to bring it out away from the side of the trolling motor bracket so the cable will be free to go through. So the second part of the pulley lift system is you have to drill a hole in the front gusset of the trolling motor and that's where you're going to connect your pulley using the quick link. So here's a view of the pulley installed with the bolts reversed and as I go around to the back you can see only the heads are there, which gives enough space for the shaft to rotate forward and backward. And then I also have this two inch stainless steel hose clamp that keeps the release lever depressed so the motor can move freely back and forth. Okay, I know I've skipped some steps, but they're pretty easy. What I did was I connected the quick link to the gusset hole that I drilled previously, then attached the stainless steel pulley. And then I also threaded the paracord, which is going to be the lifting cable. And what I did on this side was threaded the paracord through the last hole in the bracket. And then that goes down through the pulley. And then it goes up through the Harkin pulley, ready to be pulled. And the important thing in here is with that V-shape, 
that you have in your cord, it gives you a lot better power to pull up the trolling motor. Now this is the part that is going to allow the trolling motor to take some kinds of impact. So what I did was I took the quarter inch shock cord, threaded it through one of the quarter inch fender bolts, and then threaded it through the third from the bottom hole in the trolling motor bracket. Then I wrapped it around the shaft bracket and out the opposite side of the third hole with another fender bolt and a zip tie, just in case something hits really hard, it should break it loose. And the important thing is to have the shock cord on this bracket because that won't interfere with the rotation of the shaft. And you can set your own tension depending on what you think will work best. So this is what it is. And if you go too far back, it pops there. But it'll be enough to keep everything working. Now I'm going to show you that with everything installed, the motor will still go up and down very easily. The shock cord works a lot better. I was going to try using a spring, but to get the right tension, the spring has to be very tight against the trolling motor shaft, and that causes it to scratch it and damage it. So that's why I went with the shock cord. And eventually it'll wear out, but it should last you a long time. So that's it. If you have any questions, please leave them for me in the comments. Thank you.